everybody. I uh, waited almost my whole career to say this. Please welcome to the program, Robert Plant. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. There's our uh, over some fine trees, Mr. Plant. Thank you. I've got them in a sale. Give you a nice day. I'm good. <laughs> Um, I, I, I want to sort of start with the obvious. It's called Band of Joy. That's not a new title for you. Uh, it's, oh, isn't it? No, apparently, uh, uh, most people don't know this, but you had a big band, but before that, um, you actually had a band, Band of Joy. That's right, yeah. When I was 17, I thought I could change the world. And um, I was so, uh, I suppose, full of it. That I, I named this group the Band of Joy. We hardly ever worked. We never ate. Uh, <laughs> nobody liked us. There's and, almost no joy. <laughs> and uh, we, we, were, we were the absolute antithesis of joy, but we were great. You know, I mean, we were superb, and we went on to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we proceeded to do nothing right up until we did... Uh, Bonzo and I um, ended up in the Yardbirds and right. all that stuff. And I guess I got to the point now in my dotage that I thought I felt like exactly the same as I did then, you know. Oh, God, this is great. <laughs> what am I doing? Well, nothing, you know. Did you have a moment where, I mean, you had a successful record with Alison Cross, and you had this, obviously your solo career was, was, was going in the right direction, but did you look around and say, I need something else because maybe the next step isn't there? And there are no steps. <laughs> There's just staggers, you know. I mean, <laughs> and when, I, when did you learn that in your career? Like, when did you know that? Uh, well, I knew when I was 32 and Led Zeppelin finished and I was just standing there going, wow, I suppose that's a lot then, you know. Um, I'll perhaps I better do a bit of dry stone walling or something like that, you know. <laughs> uh, how about being a steeplejack, you know, <laughs> or if I like the heights. So I was always sort of wobbling around. And, um, but I think my liaison really with, with uh, the serendipity that chance that came along with Alison Krauss was fantastic for both of us because mm -hmm. she'd never sung a song with a drum kit on the same stage prior to meeting me uh, which was very funny because she had to keep running away from it as the show went on throughout the night she was moving away <laughs> from the drums and she would never sung a song without holding a fiddle so by week 20 on the tour she would put the fiddle down and she was and she was, you know, yeah, sure. it was great. I was doing the same sort of thing. I, I knew that I'd get on the Andy Williams show somehow. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> so it was good fun. And it, it opened a lot of, it, I developed a lot of um, humor and good friends down there. But to go to Nashville is an interesting choice because uh, it's not new to you to be around places where music is an important part of the fabric of a, of a culture. How familiar <laughs> were they? I mean, obviously they know, they know about Zeppelin, but how familiar were they about, with you? And, and your music and your, like, the actual reality of who you were? Well, these guys are, you know, um, the musicians around... Th there is a sort of a difference between a rock and roll musician and somebody who wants to work in Nashville, generally. It's a kind of, you know, it's kind of funny, really. You, you have to, I have to put a, a kind of a cloak over my exuberance at times, a bit like, you know, when you're trying to put a canary to sleep? Right, yeah. And you cover the cage with a cloth? Mm -hmm. I have to do that to myself sometimes down there because it's. You walk in with the cloth over you? Well, no, later on. Yeah, okay. When I, well, yeah. <laughs> Actually, come to think of it. Um, <laughs> but um, no, because I mean, I just come from the land of the ice and snow, you know. I have a laugh. <laughs> uh, steady. <laughs> you haven't heard the ballad version of that yet. <laughs> you're, you're, with the banjo. You're doing that now, aren't you? I'm doing anything. Yeah? Mm -hmm. that, that's a neat place to get in your career because for the longest time you weren't doing all those songs. Well, you know, there's, there's loads of ways of skinning a cat, really. And um, I just think that the people... I mean, this band of joy here mm -hmm. is... There are six voices on this. So sometimes when we hit something like Gallows Pole, uh, it is virtually entirely, apart from a banjo intro, it's a cappella. Mm -hmm. And it kicks like you wouldn't believe. You know? Do you get to hear those songs differently now? Does oh, this yeah. song mean something different to you? Yeah, well, yeah, it just means that you just alternate vocals with somebody who can sing better than you, better than me, you know, mm -hmm. different voices. Um, and I was never in an environment where I ever kind of sang with another singer as, a, as part of the gig until I met Alison, you know. So, I mean, what a time in life to suddenly find that you're actually singing parts and going, oh, I've got to make sure that 
I stay in tune and I don't do any baby babies or... <laughs> yeah. uh, and she'd be going, go on, give us one. I was going, no, later, love. No, no, give us one of them. Whoa, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Did she help you... Um, uh, was, she helped me a lot, yeah. Did hey? she uh, help you deal with that stuff, like connect to, to that part of your career? I don't see the perspectives at all, the way other people might... You know, you might think about my career once every two or three years. I wake up with it every day. Right. Well, so I just do what I do. Well, that's what I wondered about you because I know that people don't, I mean, some people don't really realize it. it's been a, like half your life since the Zeppelin was over and you've done a lot since then and you've won lots of Grammys since then. You, you've had a solo career that most people wish they could have in totality. But you, but you, even when you said those words, you see that recognition and the response from the audience. You know, I, I was so lucky that by being very open, with, with everything to do with music. Mm -hmm. I, I was able to go to West Africa and to travel and play in the Gulf States and in Tunisia and attend festivals in, in Morocco, which are groundbreaking, really. There's a Ganawa festival in Essaouira. These are big words, but I mean, where the men stand on one side of a town square and they're not used to standing with their wives, so the women all stand on the other side. Tell me about why you go there. There's some big festivals. I think one in Mali. You went to early. Now people talk about it and go, but you were there in the very beginning of this. Why, why go there? What, what did you get from the music there? And were you looking for something? Well, I was taken there by one of my friends, Justin Adams, who uh, was one of the big wheels in my band, Strange Sensation, and he'd worked with Malian musicians in the South Sahara, in the Sahel, which is in the northern Mali. We got the opportunity to go to Timbuktu and then go north from there and, um, and to play this kind of music. So it was like kind of a whole lot of love goes on, the, you know, some strange journey. And afterwards, the BBC did a documentary about the, the whole idea of the Tuareg seeing people coming in. And they said, well, what do you think about him? And they were most concerned that I was the strangest looking woman they'd ever seen, you know. <laughs> Because, uh... <laughs> you would have loved that, Yeah, didn't you? yeah. Uh, he, yeah, yeah. Well, how did you know? <clears throat> but, um... Yeah, so, I mean, they are great adventures and they're very good fun. But, I mean, I was lucky to go. I was just very lucky to, to get in the back door with the kind of tricks that I've got up my sleeve, you know. Can yeah. imagine. Stick around. Anthropology. More with Robert Plant when we come back. This is a great record, and I know you did some stuff with, uh, with Daniel Lanois, who's a great producer. Daniel Lanois doesn't let anybody get off the hook easily. It doesn't matter what band you were, and you could have been in Zeppelin and the Stones, and it wouldn't have mattered. He's going to make you work for it. W what was that like, that, that process with him? Well, um, it, was, it was very interesting because I thought I was crazy, you know. I mean, and I don't mind going off on tangents, and, and I, can Im I can sort of embarrass myself, but I never try and... <clears throat> and intimidate anybody. I believe the way through to get anything great out of people is to be charming and to believe in them even though they're crap, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> or whatever it is, you know, because sooner or later something's good's gonna happen. But he's the complete other side of the coin. I walked into his kitchen and he thrust a beer at me and said, well, okay, you got any lyrics? And I said, well, yeah, I've got about, you know, 300,000 ideas. He said, give me an idea. So I started reading in the poem that I'd read at my son's wedding a William Morris pro, uh, poem called Love is Enough, and it's so beautiful. Like, you know, who needs anything else if right. you've got love? So I started um, reading this out to him, and he was going, yeah, yeah! It was like Rolf Harris on acid. <laughs> you know, yeah, we'll do this, yeah, yeah. OK, play that there. We've got a loop here. Yeah. OK, now, drink this and get close. So we're like, microphone, microphone, leaning over a couch, and he's bawling at the engineer, press go. <laughs> And we're off. I've only learnt this in the last five, five, six, seven years, maybe properly. But that there is, there should always be this great amalgam of, of idea and energy and mm -hmm. spirit, because that's where all great things come from. So all the rockabilly that came out of Memphis, not Nashville, but all the stuff that came out of Sun Studios with Jerry Lee and all those guys, they were all bitching at each other. They were all trying to climb onto the top of the pile, but. They were all playing on each other's records too, you know. Sure. 
Good. You stood at the top of the pile for a long time. Did you ever look down and say, is that all there is? No, I just looked at some of the other bands and knew we were in the right place, really. Yeah. You know? <laughs> what, did, what did you guys think? <laughs> What did you think when punk, with the, with the dawn of punk in 1977, what did you think? I thought it was a wake-up call, and um, I thought it was righteous. I thought, you know, uh, uh, Jimmy and I used to go to a club in Covent Garden and watch The Damned, because they were probably the most exciting. And for the next generation, Dan, who was 17 or 18, The Clash, if you like, yeah. was the next real thing in Britain, I think, after our era. Let's throw some questions at you really quickly. You just answered the first thing that pops in your mind. Beatles or Stones? Uh, stones. Good. That's the right answer, by the way. Um, <laughs> favorite gig ever? Um, Timbuktu. Tonight, in this country, in a bar somewhere, there's a Zeppelin tribute band playing, and some guy is doing you. Any advice? Uh, try and dress to the right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever look at some of those photos and just go, Lord have mercy? <laughs> well, I didn't, but I know people who did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like now at this stage of your life and career and, and with the things you've accomplished post-Zeppelin that you have found another identity? Like you've, or you've reclaimed your identity? Um, <clears throat> well, it's been a very strange navigational game, this, which I've enjoyed. I mean, sometimes the shadows that come behind me are a little bit bigger than I need them to be, but... It's been great fun, so I've rejected it, I've turned my back on it, and I can't be any of the guys I ever was before, you know? I mean, you've you got to evolve is the only way to get through, so, you know, just give me bigger maps, you know? Good to see you. Thanks for coming here. Thanks. Good. Really appreciate it. Robert Cohen, everybody. The group is called Band of Joy. It's a really great record. Stromba.com's website. We'll see you next time. Yeah.